people, and I have to admit that there's more people now that I don't know than I do know. And uh, we got to that place. Now, uh, part of uh, Umad and I, Doresh Mimcha. So here we're, we're talking, uh, what does the Lord, and then there's a question of this uh, Doresh. Uh, you hear it, Doresh, Doresh, Drosh. The Drosh, right? Which is uh, when we, for example, uh, read the Torah portion and then we explain it, right? We explain the Torah portion. So uh, that uh, root word, uh, the root of it, lidrosh, lidrosh, the root of it is found 167 times. 167 times in the Torah. That's a lot. And uh, when I think of uh, lidrosh, I think of searching, I think of uh, looking into the scriptures and ransacking them and, and just trying to uh, derive the nuggets from the scripture. Uh, there's also a word nidrash, which also uh, is related to drash, of course. Um, when I looked in uh, to uh, the versions and what, how they translated lidrosh, uh, it, it's usually what does the Lord require, require, uh, or inquire, or seek. I like ask. What does the, the Lord uh, ask of us but to do justice, love mercy, and to walk humbly, to be humble uh, before the Lord. Now, this is found in the book of Micah, Mika, uh, in the eighth century, long time ago, BCE. So if we go back to the year zero and then we go back 800 years, then you have it, right? Uh, or 700 and something. Uh, the prophet condemned Israel, the prophet Micah. Uh, Israel meaning the 10 tribes, the 10 northern tribes, which was referred to as Israel. They were like being mean to the poor, uh, greedy, you know what I mean by greedy. They, they were focused more on uh, lavish living, you know, and their own uh, money and not paying attention to the needs of other people. And so uh, they had these desires. They, they weren't attuned to the Mosaic laws, uh, dishonest, and they were idolatrous too. They were just worshiping, tending to worship uh, stone and metal and wood. And these are not good, but you can see why within this uh, Parsha, or within this scripture actually, within the book, uh, where we get, what does the Lord ask of you but to do justice, which they weren't, to love mercy, which they were not being very kind or merciful, and to walk, and walking is a, with God, and that's a very personal thing. When you walk along the way, right, uh, you have friends, and you take walks with your friends, and you divulge certain things with your friends that you wouldn't maybe tell other people. And so when you walk with God, you are talking to God. What we have here, then, in short, is that, uh, that Israel, the northern tribe, was ultimately carried away captive, away from the land by the Assyrians. And uh, there they went out into the uttermost parts uh, of the empire of Syria. <laughs> and uh, most of them never to return. We don't know who, who they are. That's called judgment. Uh, in short, what do we derive from this? <clears throat> uh, we ought to <clears throat> go out of our way to treat people fairly, to treat people nice, 
to be kind to people, to be just, to be merciful, have mercy on them, even when they're not merciful to you, even when they're mean to you, oftentimes your behavior demonstrating love and kindness can break down uh, their uh, attitudes. And we've seen it before. They can change their attitudes and you can make someone who appears to be your enemy a friend, a friend, just by the formula, just by the MICA mandate, by uh, invoking the MICA mandate. We're just not here. We're just not here because it's all about us, right? It's not all about me, 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 me at all. In fact, humility means that you don't even know you're there, in a sense. You don't, you don't know you're there because you are too busy uh, serving other people. You're too busy looking out for the needs of others and being sensitive, sensitive to their feelings. So, we're talking about justice, mercy, and humility. And when we look at this scripture, what does the Lord ask of you but to do justice and love mercy and to walk humbly with your God? I think that the key is the third thing there, and that is to walk humbly with your God because if you walk humbly with your God, you'll fulfill the other two, and that is to be just and to be merciful. Simply <clears throat> love the Lord and your neighbor. Expand your neighborhood. You can expand your neighborhood. You can increase those within your orbit or within your sphere, and you can make more friends as a result. Well, let me give you a story and an example of uh, what happens if you do not obey the Lord here, if you do your own thing instead of God's thing. Uh, and I think it's appropriate because we just have gone through Tish B'Av and we're talking about now the destruction, the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem and uh, the uh, scattering of the people of Jerusalem and Israel and such a, a terrible, horrible disaster. And the way the Talmud, the Talmud portrays it, uh, and whether it's true or not, uh, the important thing is how the sages, uh, ultimately the rabbis after the destruction, were portraying how this happened. They said that it was due to hatred without a cause. And the story goes about a man by the name of Kamsa, and there was another man named Bar Kamsa, and there was a very rich person who threw a party, a big party. He had a friend named Kamsa. He had an enemy called Bar Kamsa. So he asked his servant to send out invitations, and the servant made a mistake. He sent an invitation to Bar Kamsa and not to Kamsa. Bar Kamsa shows up, and the host, the very rich host, who is spending a lot of money on this party, he sees Bar Kamsa there, he tells his, his people, throw him out. And Bar Kamsa comes and says, please don't humiliate me like that. Please, I will pay for my own uh, party. I'll pay for the food, I'll pay for the drink. And he said, no. Bar Kamsa said, I'll pay for half of the entire uh, festival. He said, no, I'll pay for all of it. No, and he had uh, his uh, sergeant in arm uh, kick him out, basically. And none of the, none of the uh, sages who were there uh, objected or said anything about it. Well, guess what happens? Bar Kamsa wants revenge. He goes to the Roman authorities and he says, you know, the, the Jewish people there in the, the t at the temple and uh, the priest they're not offering up 
your offerings anymore. Rome had paid for offerings, uh, animal sacrifices, to be offered up. Then what Bar Kamsa does is he takes uh, the Roman animal offering and he nicks it. He, he nicks its, its lip and makes it, some say, oh, the white of his eye, uh, but he makes it so that it was not kosher to sacrifice. And so the priests wouldn't sacrifice it. So Rome was really mad because of what the priest and the, and the uh, Levites and the temple people were doing, not accepting Roman offerings and sacrifices. And consequently, uh, Rome sent their, their general in Vespasian and destroyed Jerusalem and, and took down the, the temple. And that was the consequence that people were not being just to each other. People were not being merciful to each other. People were not listening to God. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Uh, think of others before you think of yourself. By, so, by doing so, you'll save the temple. By doing so, you will save people. You will do a lot of good and you won't do any harm. So how do you balance mercy and justice? That's the big uh, question. Uh, we all want to want justice, but we also need to temper that with mercy. And if it's too much mercy, then without being tempered by justice, then it's off kilter. It's like a coin. A coin has two sides. There's justice and mercy, and it needs to be balanced. So I want to just give you a, a story in the New Testament about a woman who was uh, caught uh, in adultery, who was caught uh, uh, doing things that she shouldn't do outside her marriage. And uh, so you can find this in John 8, in John 8, in the New Testament. But the scribes and the Pharisees, they bring a woman to Yeshua, and they say that she was caught in adultery. Now, he was busy. He was teaching. And I don't know if it was a setup or what, that they bring this woman uh, and want to test him and say, well, what do you say about this? According to the law, both the adulterer, the one who, uh, well, the adulterer and the adulteress, you know, both of the parties who were involved in the impropriety or were involved in the uh, imp impermissible conduct uh, are to be stoned, both of them. And so uh, that's what they say. She should be stoned. What do you say, Yeshua? He writes on the ground. Now, I know we all want to know what he wrote on the ground, so I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what he wrote on the ground, but it's not going to be for sure. But when I was coming over here, thinking about the message, and I said to my wife, Joyce, I said, he wrote with his finger. Ah, the finger of God. And that's what God wrote with his finger, the Ten Commandments. I said, he must have written a scripture. He must have written, thou shalt not commit adultery. I don't know, who knows? but we can engage in some historical imagination, right? I've heard others, too. So he says, thou shalt not uh, commit adultery. And then, and then uh, they, they basically uh, ask him again, you know, what, what, what will you do? And, and he's down on with his finger again, and what did he say? And I'm thinking that he had a scripture. And I'm thinking that the scripture had to do with you have to have two witnesses in order 
to convict. He had two or three witnesses. So that's, that's biblical due process. That's procedural due process. And uh, uh, whoever has not sinned, let them cast the first stone. You know, if a witness lied and accused, and uh, they were the first, they were also to be stoned. So that, that was pretty good encouragement to tell the truth. But the point here is that they all went away. There were no witnesses. There were no witnesses. There was, there's biblical uh, a requirement of a procedural due process, of a fairness, and we didn't have that. And so that was the justice part. And then he said to the woman, who most probably committed adultery because he said, go and sin no more. Merciful. He was able to deliver mercy because of justice. And consequently, she was acquitted. Finally, finally, justice meets mercy on the crucifixion stake. On the tree, justice meets mercy. Yeshua hanging on that crucifixion stake, which is vertical and horizontal. Vertical to God and horizontal to everyone. There it was, perfect justice, perfect uh, mercy, uh, there it was, justice, because Yeshua paid the penalty for us. Yeshua's blood, the only element in the universe that had the power uh, to pay the penalty and substitute for our sins and our wrongs, there he was, hanging. And then we have the mercy because it was that blood, uh, that atonement that we were granted mercy, unmerited favor that he who was innocent was, took our penalty and we who were guilty were set free. We have justice and mercy kissing on the tree and making available our freedom today. So don't focus on yourself. Yeshua certainly didn't. On, on God, let that be your focus. And on his uh, beings, on people, let that be your focus. He was humiliated, humiliated. And we should be willing to be humiliated so that others might be free. And then go the extra mile. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. Forgive us, forgive uh, us, we get forgiveness as we forgive others. And finally, uh, do unto others as you would have them do to you let us let God cover our multitude of sins with his love in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you, Elliot. Thank, Thank you so you. much. As always.